Mm, you know I'm going to do something stupid, girl. I don't have a choice. <gasps> there he is, my man. The guy I've been waiting to see, like, since we started this adventure. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Bruce Livingstone. And he has written a screenplay. He sent it to his boss, Sophia Amaral. The lady we just kind of saw give a presentation that I didn't really pay attention to. And I'm going to read it for you, because it's really good. I think Hollywood should, like learn a few lessons from this guy. So, here we go. <clears throat> hey, Dr. Amaral. We hey, haven't talked Mr. too Rick. much. No, Jack, I'm reading here. What? We haven't talked... Shit. To... Damn it, Jack. Like I said, <clears throat> we haven't talked too much, but I'm one of Serene's guys from Reaper Squad. Working around all this time tech stuff, time tech stuff, or chronon tech, you call it, I guess. Got me real inspired, so I started writing a screenplay. There's a lot of science talk in here, so I want a scientist to check it and make sure I kind of make kind of make sense. Would you mind taking a look? Thanks. Here's the first half. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? This is gonna blow your brains off. Get ready for the most advanced thriller ever written, but not published. Or Bruce. Time Life, written by Bruce Livingstone. Act one. Interior, office, night. Bruce Savage. <laughs> okay. Bruce Savage stands in his office. He's sexually attractive. Mm. Somebody knocks on Bruce's door and he opens it. It's a scientist lady. She looks like a librarian with glasses, but she's actually a scientist. You can tell because she has a lab coat. Lady scientist. Help me. Bruce. Okay. Lady scientist. Take this knife because some bad apples are trying to steal it, and it is very important. Okay. What is your name, handsome? I'm Bruce. Let's shake hands. Bruce and Lady Scientist shake hands. Wow, you almost broke my hand with that handshake. You are definitely a tough guy. You. She's impressed with Bruce's strength. She looks at his large biceps like they are delicious pieces of ham, but she doesn't want to eat them. Here is the knife. The lady scientist hands Bruce the knife. It looks mostly like a knife, but also like a time machine, because it is both a knife and a time machine, but Bruce doesn't own that yet. Some goons break through the windows and shoot the scientist lady. She dies. Avenge me! Okay. Bruce kills the goons with his legs by doing lots of kicking at them. They are dead real quick. Looks like I got a leg up on you guys. Yeah! The audience probably laughs here, so Brutes waits to deliver the, his next line for around five seconds so that everybody has calmed down. What is so special about this knife? Bruce stabs the knife into his chair. The chair disappears. The chair disappeared! He looks at a picture on his wall, with a, which is a big photo. 1932 with lots of people from 1932 in it. Bruce's chair is in the picture. Interesting. My chair traveled back in time to 1932 when I stabbed it. When I stabbed things, they traveled through time. That explains why this knife looks like a knife, but also like a time machine. Because it is both. Bruce's real goofy friend from across the hall runs into the room. He trips on something on the floor. His name is Slobo. That's an actual name that people are just dying to give to their children after hearing this script. He isn't as fat as his name sounds. So Slobo says, Ah, oh, yeah! That is Slobo's catchphrase, and he says it in a real funny way. So scientist lady, Bruce, you saved my life! The scientist lady was only faking being dead. Are you married? Only to my job. I find that attractive, but also respectable. She kisses Bruce's cheek. Oh, what about my cheek? Oh man! That is Slobo's other catchphrase, which he says in a different but equally funny way. Bruce waits a few seconds for the audience to stop laughing before speaking. Wait, those lips were man lips, not woman lips. Bruce pulls off the scientist lady's wig. She is actually Bruce's boss, Paul Marine! Paul Marine is a douche. My boss, but why? 
I wanted you to kill those guys behind because they wanted you dead. I knew you were real tough. You were real tough, so you could kill them easy. But I don't respect you as an employee, so I always make you do the shitty jobs. Even though you've been working at my company more than most of the other guys and are really smart. Also, I don't like you because my girlfriend finds you sexually attractive. Now I understand. Give me my tie knife back. Paul Marine snaps his fingers and 73 goons surround Bruce. You can't kill 73 goons, so just give up. I don't have time for this. Bruce stabs himself with the time knife and disappears. He traveled using the time knife. Bruce opens the door. Now he is twice as Jack. You're even more sexually attractive. How is this possible? I stab myself and travel to the past, then train in all kinds of martial arts to become even stronger. I also strapped explosives into everybody's boots in the past so that when I press the detonator, you will all explode. Oh yeah! I'm glad I have stocks in this company. Why? Because business is booming. Bruce presses the detonator. All 73 goons blow up like eggs in a microwave. Paul Marine doesn't explode. Luckily, I used my metal detector this morning and found the explosives. Ha ha ha, so I switched boots with somebody else. Say, Slobo, whose boots are you wearing? No! Slobo explodes. My best friend, you pay for this. You don't want to stab me with a time knife. Why not? Because I am actually you from the future. That does not make sense. Yes, yes it does. Remember that the time knife is also a time machine. I am you from the future. I stab myself with the time knife in order to come back here and do all this. But we don't look the same. That is a good point. And I'm glad you brought it up. First time, first I time traveled 70 hundred years into the future. A time where humans have created advanced technology. It allows surgeries that completely change people's faces and bodies. I had this surgery performed so that you wouldn't be able to recognize me. But I am actually you in disguise. I can prove it because I know many things about you. Like what? You have a birthmark on your left ankle. I do have a birthmark on my left ankle. I am starting to believe you now. You should, because even though I have a new body, I kept that birthmark on my ankle so that when I met you, I could prove that I was actually you from the future. I will show you. Paul lifts up, uh, lifts up the left leg of his pants. But there is no birthmark. Instead, there is an ankle holster for a gun. Paul puts out the gun and aims at Bruce. I was lying this whole time. I'm not actually you. I was just saying all of that so that I could get to my gun. Son of a bitch. Also, in the future, I melted the time knife and turned it into bullets. So those bullets are now in this gun. Which means that I can shoot you, but also send you through time and all at once. Finally, you will be out of my way. I can, so that I can marry my girlfriend, Sophine, later today, before you are able to tell her that I'm a real shitty guy. I didn't know you were getting married today. I know. My girlfriend, Sophine, made an invitation for you because she admires you and thinks you're attractive. But I destroyed the invitation and then lied to her and said I gave it to you at work. But now I am here to give you a different invitation. To your funeral. Paul Marine shoots at Bruce. Slobo jumps in front of Bruce. Jumps in front of Bruce. No! Slobo wasn't actually dead. He jumps in front of the bullets. He shot several times. Now he's actually dying. For real this time. Avenge me! Okay. Bruce goes to attack Paul Marine, but now Paul Marine has disappeared. He's gone. Slobo is dying on the ground, covered in blood. His body is red like a hot dog, covered in lots of ketchup. You must stop the wedding. You are totally a better guy and clearly more attractive than Paul. You should be dating the, his girlfriend, Sophine. Slobo dies. Bruce just sits there next to Slobo for a while. 
because many people will be crying at this point. You eventually get some. Looks like I'm going to a wedding. After all, he holds out his the timeline. Somebody's gonna cut the cake. Cut the cake means he's going to kill Paul. The audience will understand because of the way the actor says it. It is a real intense moment. Bruce puts on his shades. End of Act 1.